Hello friends, welcome to Programming Concepts. My name is Amit and this is part 33 of ASP.NET Core MVC tutorial. In this video, we will talk about what are tag helpers in .NET Core MVC. This is continuation to part 32, passing anonymous object from controller to view. So please watch it before proceeding to this one. I shared the link in the description. So what are tag helpers? So tag helpers enable server-side code to participate in creating and rendering HTML elements in Razor file. So what does that mean? Enable server-side code, rendering HTML, Razor files, etc. Let's understand that. First, let's get back to Visual Studio. And this is the project which we are working on. I already deleted view back and view data which we had created in our last couple of videos. Now I'm using strongly typed views. Just in case you had missed our previous videos or you are only interested in tag helpers. So not much we had covered so far. Just understand that here at the top, we are receiving list of employees and that will be available to us via model. And below, we would like to display these details. All right, I already applied loop. Now, how to display the information available? We'll see that in just a bit. First, we use the word razor files in our definition. See in the slide. Can you guess what are razor files in our case? Yes, it is our view .cshtml files. All right. The next important word is rendering HTML. So as a developer, you should know that our browser understands HTML. It does not understand C Sharp, C++, or any other high-level programming language, including Java. Right. Let's get back to our view and let's use Razor syntax. So first column at item.id. In second column, at item.name. In third column, at item.salary. In fourth column, at item.department. So if you look at our code, this is a CSHTML file, which means this is our view to render HTML. It is meant for front-end coding, which also means it is meant for UI or HTML rendering, right? But it not only contains HTML, but also server-side code. Here, at, which is a razor syntax, which means here we are writing our server-side code. But as we discussed earlier, browser only understands HTML. So if I run this program, ideally this server-side code should not work, right? Let's see that. Let's run the program. Oops. Working without any issue. But how? If you go to its source, you can see content is generated as text. So Microsoft, or you can say this ASP.NET Core framework, doing some internal magic or conversion to convert server-side code to HTML, right? So our view, our .cs HTML is capable to convert server-side code to HTML, which is a good thing. Next, here we only display text, but HTML consists of many other things like anchor tag, image tag, label, input, etc., right? Let's, let's take the example of label. Let's get back to our slide. So we can create labels with the help of HTML elements, right? This is what we are doing it for generations. So with MVC, Microsoft came up with another concept called HTML helper, which can help us to create labels. Then tag helpers for labels in .NET Core. But why? As a developer, we are using the HTML element and we are quite comfortable with that. 
then why does Microsoft keep on adding these new things? We need to learn them and they are making our life miserable. Right. So the first thing which we need to understand is that whenever new feature comes in any framework, either they are meant to make the developer life easier, not miserable, or to achieve something new. And here with tag helpers, you can't find anything new. Whatever we are achieving with tag helpers is achievable with previous versions as well. So it means it is introduced by Microsoft to reduce development effort, right? Let's see how. Let's go to the Visual Studio. If you look at my Solution Explorer, within the image folder, I placed a couple of images. Let's try to display one of them with the help of an HTML element. First, let's create a div and then make the content at the center with the help of text hyphen center bootstrap class. And to display images, we need to use an image tag. So, img space src source is equal to apply tilde sign for root slash images slash image one dot jpg. Let's give any alternate text. Let's say image just in case if application doesn't find that image. And that's it. It should display the image. Let's run the program. See, image is displaying as expected. Next, let's say we need to change this image. So let's go to the image location and change the view to the extra large icon. Let's rename these images. Change image 1 to image 3 and image 2 to image 1. Simple. So in the live project, we can change images, right? Now, let's try to refresh the page. Refresh the browser. Oops, still the same image. Refresh the page again. No change. So let's do the hard refresh by pressing Ctrl plus F5. Now it's changed. So what happened here? To improve performance, browser cached the images, which is a good thing. But on the similar line, we also wanted to provide the latest images to our end user. Right. So historically, the solution for this is after an image was edited, the name had to be changed and each reference to the image in the web app needed to be updated. And this is very labor intensive. It's also error prone. For example, there might be 10 references to this image, and you deleted the image one and upload a new file with the name, say, image two, and you missed one reference. It is a problem, right? So later on, a solution came. Uh, we will not change the name, but update the file version. So this looks slightly easier. Let's try to achieve this. Let's say in our server code, we manage to identify file is modified, right? We write some logics where we identify that file is modified. So I'm not writing complete code here. Just assume the request came and we identify the file is modified and we created its new file version, right? So let's, let's say random. Let's the object name be random with small r is equal to new random. Then let's create a view back and let's say image version is equal to random dot next. So within server side code, we identify a file is modified and we manually created its file version. Let's use this image version in view. So just append the question mark and let's say version is equal to at 
viewback dot image version and let's run the program now so we are getting image one dot jpg let's swap image one with the other one so rename image one to image three and image two to image one and let's refresh the page now it is changing and i hope you can guess why the browser is not able to cache the image so just right click on the image inspect element you can see the number after the question mark version all right so let's again refresh the page and the version number is changed i haven't implemented the actual code to get you know the actual e tag the concept is called the http e tag i discussed a bit of caching and e tag in part 9 of this video series if you want you can watch that video i will share the link in the description so here just a small demonstration you know how we can specify the file version so that a browser knows okay this is a new file and i need to request to the server every time so to reduce this effort microsoft decided to create tag helpers to efficiently merge client side code i mean html elements with server side code right that that's what they're in the definition so let's use tag helpers to achieve the same feature so first thing is to import tag helpers in our view as it is a server side code we need necessary imports to use them all right so according to microsoft tag helpers scope is controlled by a combination of add tag helpers and add remove tag helpers first we need to add tag helpers so let's type at add tag helper this add tag helpers directives makes tag helpers available to view so it will accept two parameters the first parameter after add tag helpers specify the tag helpers to load and the second parameter specify the assembly containing the tag helpers all right so let's use the second parameter as asterisk so it is a wildcard which means all tag helpers will be available all right and the third parameter will be the assembly name of these tag helpers where all these tag helpers are present so all these tag helpers are present under microsoft dot aspnet core dot mvc dot tag helpers assembly or you can say this is a namespace all right next within html element type asp hyphen append hyphen version is equal to true so as soon as you type this command color of element is changed which signifies that this simple html element is treated as a tag helper by our framework all right let's run the program let's change the image at the back end change image 1 to image 2 and image 3 to image 1 let's refresh the page and you can see the correct image is displayed let's just inspect element and you can see it automatically added version number for our image see how simple it is with the help of image tag helpers let's get back to our slide so there are many inbuilt tag helpers for common tasks such as creating forms links loading assets and more and even more is in available in public github repositories and also as a new git packages 
Apart from that, you can create your own custom filters. So we will cover them as we progress through this tutorial. But there are still many questions that might come to your mind. So what is the scope of tag helpers? What if we don't want to use wildcard? What if we don't want to use tag helpers in a specific view? So why tag helpers if we already have HTML helpers, etc. We'll cover them in our upcoming videos of this playlist. So all right then, that's it in this video. If you have any queries related to the content of this video, do ask me in comments. Till then, thanks for watching.